Good afternoon, everyone. Today is the 11th of September, 9-11. <laughs> and um, the 8th chapter of Romans, portions of it have been named the Golden Chain of Salvation. And uh, also, portions of it have been totally read out of context. Remember George Bush Jr. reading this on 9-11, shortly after? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Well, George Bush, that was not talking about the United States there. Paul was not addressing the United States. Paul was addressing those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. That's who he was addressing. Now, he said the carnal mind is enmity against God. It's not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. It doesn't seem like the United States is subject to the law of God. Um, so anyway, the um, it also talks about the fact that we're joint heirs with Christ if we're one of his. But probably one of the most succinct portions of Scripture in the Bible is Romans 8.28 um, through 30. Romans 28 through 30. We know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them are the called according to his purpose for whom he did foreknow. He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among, among many brethren. And now the golden chain of salvation. Verse 30. Moreover, whom he did predestinate. That means to predetermine what happens to them before they're born. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. Who shall lay anything to the charge? For these things of God before us, who can be against us? And so on. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Who is God will justify us? We're not into self-justification. We're in the honoring God who justified the Spirit of Son Jesus Christ. So that's kind of a uh, kind of a quick prelude to this reading. I'm going to turn it over to Mark and have him read the entire chapter of Romans eight. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. While the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do is that it was weak to the flesh. God sent his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. For righteousness the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after Spirit. For they that are after flesh do mind the things of flesh, but they that are after spirit the things of the spirit. For be carnally minded is death, and be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, and so be the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Christ be in you, 
The body is dead because of sin. The spirit is alive because of righteousness. The spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not the flesh to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if through the Spirit you mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. For ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself bears a witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And of children, their heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs of Christ. So be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that should be revealed in us with the earnest expectation of the creature waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. The creature was made sub to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the body of corruption and glory is to be the children of God. We know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth and pain together until now. Not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption of with redemption of our body. For we are saved by hope, and hope that is seen is not hope. What a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? If we hope for that we see not, then do we patience wait for it. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. The Spirit itself maketh an intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. He that searches the hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh an intercession for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good to them that love God, and then we are called according to his purpose. For he did for no, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son. He might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, then he also called. Whom he called, then he also justified. And whom he justified, then he also glorified. What shall we then say to these things? God be for us, he could be against us. He that spared not his own Son delivered him up for us all. How shall we not? With him also freely give us all a Shabbat with him. Give us all thanks. Who shall lay into thing the charge of God's elect is God that justifieth? Who is he that condemneth his Christ that died, yea, rather than is risen again? Who is even at the right hand of God, who hath also make an intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of God, shall tribulation, distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or pearl, or Eternal sword is written for thy sake. We are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, or any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you, Mark. By the way, this chapter also refutes the doctrine of Arminianism, which denies election and predestination. God bless. <laughs>